So what's wrong with this picture? For today's Sunday case study, I'm gonna discuss a case that we see often in the trauma bay. I have a 54 year old male who is out riding his motorcycle. A car didn't see him and pulled out in front of him and he struck the car and rolled off his bike. He was unconscious at the scene and was brought in by EMS with multiple open orthopedic injuries. He also underwent a PAN scan in our trauma bay and was found to have a closed head injury, facial fractures, as well as this. Here's a CT scan of his cervical spine. He was intubated in the emergency department and the ER physician did state he reached his hand up to try to grab the tube. He also had internal bleeding in his abdomen and had to be taken emergently to the operating room for that. What are the findings that you saw on the CT scan and what other injuries may be associated with that? What is the next step of treatment and how quickly do we get to this? Stay tuned tomorrow and I'll go through the full case. And also, go dogs! Yesterday I asked, what's wrong with this picture? I presented the case of a 54 year old male who presented as a level one trauma to our trauma center after being involved in a motorcycle accident. He was driving his motorcycle and a car pulled out in front of him and he struck that car. He rolled off his bike and was unconscious at the scene and was brought in by EMS to our facility where he was found to have multiple injuries including facial fractures, traumatic brain injuries, multiple open orthopedic injuries, as well as this. This C-spine CT shows a traumatic disruption of C4 and 5 at the disc space right here. You can see the small avulsion of the inferior end plate of C4 and widening of that disc space, as well as some significant narrowing of a cervical spinal canal right here. It's not the most obvious on CT scan. However, it is probably one of the most important injuries that we have to detect early in this patient. Remember I said he was unresponsive and was taken emergently to the operating room for internal bleeding. Early decompression of a spinal cord injury is of utmost importance for long-term recovery. In this polytrauma patient, it is so important to get all the subspecialists involved in his care right off the bat so we know how to best streamline his care for the best outcomes. Now this patient has a high cervical spinal cord injury, so the quicker we get the pressure off of the spinal cord, the more likely he may regain some type of neurological function. I also asked what other associated injury he may have secondary to that spinal cord injury, and the answer is a vertebral artery dissection. Vertebral artery runs through our cervical spine through a small canal called the transverse foramen, and any type of spinal cord injury can lead to a vertebral artery dissection. Basically, that means that artery can be stretched and can clot off and cause a stroke. Vertebral arteries is one of the main arteries that supply the back part of our brain. So if this artery gets disrupted, it could potentially cause damage to our brain as well. Back to our patient, if we look at his CT, CTA, you can see the vertebral arteries traveling here. And off to this side, you can see where that vertebral artery is compressed secondary to the injury to his cervical spine. Since he was in the operating already with trauma surgery, I decided to get that cervical spine fracture reduced as soon as he was stabilized from his abdominal injuries. How did I do that? Through a quick procedure called an anterior cervical discectomy infusion, where basically I went through a small incision on the front of his neck and reduced that fracture with a plate and screws. You can also see where the cervical spinal canal is now patent. He also underwent urgent stabilization of those orthopedic injuries as well. The patient had an extensive recovery in front of him due to the multitude of injuries he sustained. This patient went to a spinal cord injury rehab and is slowly making progress in his recovery. Now back to my original question. If you do ride motorcycles, the type of gear that you wear may help with injury prevention. This meta-analysis showed that a full face helmet will reduce your risk of not only brain injuries, but also cervical spine fractures by 67%. It's likely that if this patient was wearing different protective gear, he may have had a different outcome. Stay safe out there and I'll see you guys next Sunday for another case and go dogs.